Hello stylers and welcome back to the Full Style channel for another video. Today's video is this cute, fun, and sexy plus size unicorn costume. Perfect for a girls night in this Halloween or a bachelorette party or if you just want to dress up for y'all, you know, your significant other. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing how I created this sexy but simple plus size DIY unicorn, then stay tuned. So first, we're going to start off with the tulle skirt. This is a really simple tulle skirt. I only have a few yards of tools here, and this is kind of left over. This is about three to five yards of orange and red tulle, and I just went in with the same um, technique that I used last year for my um, Captain Phasma tulle skirt, and that's creating a casing for a ribbon or elastic to go through at the top. So you want to sew about a half an inch to two inch room at the very top of the fold of the tool to create a casing and pocket so you can insert your ribbon or elastic through. I'm going to take a crochet hook and I'm going to take a rubber band and a piece of ribbon that I've measured around to give me enough room to tie. To wrap around my waist and with a tie, I'm going to attach that ribbon to the cro crochet hook and I'm going to feed it through the casing, which is now a tube. Um, to feed the ribbon through. You can also use elastic for this. Now, using a headband that I got from the dollar store, some leftover black knit stretch fabric, some embroidery, some embroidery thread, um, some glitter gold scrapbook paper, some cotton pillow uh, filling, some faux flowers, and some glue sticks. So starting off, I've cut out the shapes that I need for my unicorn horn as well as my ears. And I just cut out a triangle shape that I'm going to fold over to create the cone of the unicorn horn. And then I cut out some teardrop shapes and this black stretchy knit fabric. And I'm going to sew all the way around leaving a gap big enough for me to insert the pillow um, cotton, um, cotton stuffing. Um, and then turn that inside out and I'm going to fill that up into my desired fillness. Um, I wanted these to have um, dimension and depth and to be soft. But as you can see um, at the end result, I did end up changing these to more of just the paper because these was the both the cone and the ears were entirely too big and they looked absolutely ridiculous on my head. Um, next, I'm going to trace out the same shape that I did when I cut out the fabric on the ears, but I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that I can have the insert part of the unicorn's ear. So basically, the, uh, like a teardrop shape, horse's ears. You guys know how to draw horse's ears. We all drew them in school. I'm going to take that glitter scrap of paper and I'm going to hot glue it to that um, fabric, um, almost kind of like pillow type material that I created for the ears. So moving on to the crown, to the horn of the unicorn head, I'm going to first fill up the tip area of the unicorn, the top, the tip of the unicorn crown um, to give that nice and full and perky. And then I'm going to take some embroidery thread and a very large needle. And I'm going to um, take the needle from the bottom of the opening that I left open on that cone shape and insert to the very top. And I'm, that's what I'm going to use to wrap around the that center, wrap around that triangle shape to make it the curves of the unicorn horn. You guys keep counting how many times I say unicorn. And once I've done that, I'm going to close off. I'm going to do a basic stay stitch down at the bottom to close off that casing so everything can stay nice and snug in there. And then you just want to go ahead and wrap around and wrap that embroidery thread around that triangle shape, creating the curvature and the, um, yeah, creating the curvature and the spiral around the unicorn horn um you can make these as big as small as you want them to you can have a few only a few um spirals or you can have as many as you want once you have got it to your liking i went ahead and took that same needle and i'm just going to feed it in and out at the base of the horn to set everything into place and pull it real nice and tall and because this shape was so big, I had a lot of fabric left over at the bottom. I'm just taking my hot glue, tucking those little um, triangle pieces in on themselves, 
and gluing them down so that it's easy for me to attach to the top of my headband. Okay, once I have that all done and I like the way that I like how the spirals are laying, I'm going to take this sparkly rhinestone um, braid bead, sorry, chain. I'll take this sparkly rhinestone chain that is left over from my prom dress from last year and I'm going to take that and just hot glue it around the same um, where I placed that um, embroidery thread. Now I'm going to take the remaining of this knit fabric and I'm going to cover that headband. This is pretty much self-explanatory. You want to take your unicorn horn and place it in the top middle of the headband and then take your ears your ears and place them around um, on the sides of the handband. Make sure you like the way they're laid out. And then we're going to, um, as you can see guys, this stuff is huge even on the little mannequin head. Um, then I'm going to add the flowers and headpiece. Um, this one is you could pretty much have fun with it. You know, your color scheme, the type of flowers you want to use, the placement, whether you want to do small flowers, big flowers. And I just went around and I played with this a little bit before I decided on using this dusty kind of uh, pale pink, um, almost sunflower-esque big flower. And then I went around with these smaller white, almost daisy type flowers. And I really, really liked how that looked. As you can see from the final, um... The final look at the beginning of the video, I will go back and I will change the ears and the horn of this unicorn because I really didn't like how big it was. It was extremely too big for my head and then it was really dark and I wanted something light and airy because I knew I was wearing um, dark tights and shorts and a bustier and I wanted something sparkly and bright. So I didn't get footage of me changing out the ears and the horn because I did that later in the evening. So here is just, uh, I'm going to talk you through it real quick. I used that same sparkly paper that I used to be the inside of the ears. I just glued it on the back on the front of some cardboard so it could have some dimension and then use some white, white scrapbook paper for the inserts. I did the same um, method that I did when I created, when I used the black material for the crown. I did that with some satiny some satin white material that I had left over to create the cone hair and this one is very much light the dimensions are smaller so it's not as big and bulky and I really love how the colors and that sparkle just pops I'm so glad I went back and changed it was bugging me all day so now we're gonna go on to the fun part which is the makeup I'm going to start off with a fresh clean face that is moisturized and primed and I'm going to go and start off with my eyeshadow. I like to get that done on the way especially when I'm doing something as elaborate as adding glitter. I'm going to go in with this Sophie X palette for Makeup Revolution and I'm going to go in with a matte brown shadow and I'm going to use it as my crease color. No, I'm going to use it as my transition color to help the other shadows blend together and lay on each other together. I'm, next I'm going to go in with this burnt um, orange color and that's going to become my crease color and I'm going to put that right above where I put that brown color and that's going to sit right above my um, brow bone. No, that's going to sit right above my eye socket. So the crease color, the transition brown color goes into the eye socket. That brown color, that orange one goes on top of it. I'm going to go to the two darkest shades in the palette, which is this dark matte brown and this black. And I'm going to mix those two together and I'm going to use that to add dimension and depth to my outer V. This is, I knew I didn't want like a smoky look, but I did want to add a little bit of dimension to build on top on. I'm going to take this trick that I learned and I'm going to take a, um, a longer brush and I'm going to use that. To angle up my eyeshadow so that it be able to pull out like you know I don't know how to say it you guys so it gives that like almost eyeshadow angle look like you like you winged out your eyeshadow but you didn't the same method 
almost applies if you use tape. I'm going to wet a small shader brush with a little bit of setting spray and I'm going to go into this pink sparkly shade and I'm going to lay that down as the base of the sparkle that I'm going to add to my eye. And then because I want a little bit more sparkle and like a gradient effect, I'm going to go in with this shimmery um, orange color, shimmery, like shimmery orange color. And I'm going to add that to the inner corner of the eye. And I'm going to go back and forth between the shimmery pink and the shimmery orange, building on top of each other. One is the more shimmery, one is more dual chrome. And just building on top of each other, layering and blending them together so they're more seamlessly and smooth. But both of them are shiny and they get their debut. Then I'm going to take a little bit of lash glue, or you can use um, glitter glue if you have some. I don't. And I'm going to use this NYX Glitter Pigment, which I am obsessed with. And I'm going to add that to my inner corner of my eye for that glitter, glittery, sparkly effect that I am absolutely obsessed with. I am obsessed with the glitter eyeshadows. I don't know if you can tell. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go back and retouch up those other shadows, blending everything out. Eyeshadow is all about blending, blending and layering. Um, go back and forth, touching things up to get everything seamlessly and smoothly, and make sure no shadow is lost and nothing looks muddy. So that's what I'm doing now. Just clean everything up. I'm going to clear off the glitter from my face, and I'm gonna go in and create and finish the rest of my makeup, and I will be back. While I was off camera, I finished the rest of my makeup. I'm currently baking right now. I did my eyebrows and I also did a very big, dramatic wing liner. Right now, I am applying some falsies because it is Halloween, girls' night, that's red party, so of course, why not? These, this is completely optional. This is just something I like. I am, I believe these are Demi Wispies from um Ardell these are like double stack demi wispies I really like these they're fun flirty I'm going to take some mascara to help blend my lashes with the falsies so we don't have anything poking out looking too crazy on the camera I'm going to dust off my powder and then I'm going to go in contour bronze set my uh, foundation with my press powder foundation from Lancome And I'm going to set my face, let that all sit in. And now I'm back. Once again, at this point, I am rushing because I really need to finish my makeup. Because one, I'm losing light. And two, I have to do the bride's makeup. Um, so I'm going to go in with this Laura Mercier powder that I got for free, y'all, from Influenza. And I'm going to use that to highlight. And I'm going to sparkle for the world to see, okay? I want to sparkle for the world to see, so I'm going to dust that all over my cheeks and my nose, my brow bone, as well as my chest because ooh la la. And then I'm going to take that um, eyeshadow, no. Then I'm going to take that lash glue and I'm going to stipple that on my cheeks where I put my highlight because I'm going to add that glitter. Yes, I'm going to add a little bit more of that glitter onto my cheeks um, where I highlight because again, ooh la la. Bachelor party, Halloween, unicorn, you have to sparkle. I'm going to line my lips with a dark brown lip liner. And then I'm going to go in with this pinky mauvish matte um, jumbo lipstick, jumbo lip pencil. And I'm also going to go back to the eye, um, eyelash glue or your glitter glue because we're going to do what? Add more glitter. When in doubt, add more glitter. Glitter makes everything look better. I'm going to go and I'm going to stipple that glitter onto my lips. And this one I use the uh, crystal glitter instead of the gold glitter. This one is white, clear, with a little bit of flecks of blue, green in there. Purple is absolutely beautiful. And I also add a little bit of that to my cheeks to give a little bit more dimension. It's so much glitter happening in my face. My camera cannot even focus. I am obsessed.
And once you have done that, guys, you are done. You can set so eyes, you can heart content. This was so much fun. This was so cute. I'm absolutely obsessed with how this came out. This is so cute, so sexy, so fun, so flirty. The glitter is, of course, optional, but I cannot live without it. So, I'll tell you guys real quick how I assembled this costume. The theme of the bachelorette party was lingerie or pajamas. I couldn't afford lingerie, so I did a combination of the two. I took these faux Gardner thigh-high tights from Torrid, and I put on a pair of some pajama shorts that have lace trim. On top of those, put on my little footies because we was running around the house, and then I have this vintage suede and lace bustier top that you guys have seen before. Put that all together and I have this sexy, fun, cute look that cost me absolutely nothing because most of the stuff I already own. Um, this was so fun. So cute. So simple. Perfect for a girls night in or a bachelorette party or something you could wear for, you know, your significant other. I thank you guys so very much for watching. You guys have a happy, spooky Halloween. I love you guys so much. And always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time.